came down from Abbotsford, BC mm -hmm. to, to attend this and, and see some family. Wow. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for watching my videos. Today, I and my friends, uh, Abu Micah, Shepard and Gift, are at an event called Haying in the Thirties. This is one of the biggest events in Alberta and people travel from different places to attend this event in Malay. People from as far as BC, Ontario, uh, Manitoba usually come and camp here as you can see hundreds of RVs. The parking lot is huge and when you park your car, you get into a tractor that will ferry you to the event spot and back to your car whenever you are done. There is free food and drinks, but anyways, let me look for Mr. Lone, the president of this organization, so that he can tell us more and the purpose of this event. Mr. President, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, can you tell us about this event? What do you want to achieve when you have this event? Well, the, the, achieve, the achievement is we, we, it's a fundraiser for people that have cancer. Okay. So, okay. what happens is... Uh, people that have kind of cancer, they can go on our website, they can uh, print off an application form, and we donate money to them for things like parking, a hotel room. 25 years ago, the man that started this, his name is Edgar Corbier, okay. he had to take his son to Vancouver for treatment. And back in those days, he had to take him to Vancouver because there was no facilities yet in Edmonton and Calgary and those kinds of places. So he took him to, Cal to Vancouver to get his treatment, but he couldn't afford to go. So some people around this area got together and collected money for him to be able to go to take his son for treatment. Okay. So um, I'm from Edmonton and I came to Canada 14 years ago. And I haven't heard about this event until this year when a friend of mine from Bonneville told me that, hey, there is a very big event mm -hmm. here in Alberta. Do people out there know about this event? Yes, but it's all word of mouth. We do no advertising as far as television advertising. Uh, we do get some radio stations that interview us and those kinds of things. The rest is word of mouth from people that have been here. So usually how many people attend? We think we had about 5,000 people here today. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 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 What else do you want to say to people out there to support this event? What I want them to, to, to know is that this is a, a, a place where you can come and see how they uh, farmed and did haying in the 30s. Uh, and the reason being is to raise funds for cancer patients. Uh, all of our people that work here are volunteers. We have not one paid position. Everybody is a volunteer. So um, the idea is we have free food, we have free drinks, we have everything is free, camping is free, and as long as you come down here and make a little donation to our cause. So guys out there, you hear for yourself from the president himself. Next year, please come and support this event. Always the long weekend of August. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you can check our website, you can check our Facebook page, and all the updates will be there. Mr. Lone, thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm good. How are you enjoying the day? I'm doing good. We're from Abbotsford. I'm coming from Edmonton, and this is my first time to be here. Wow. Oh, yeah. I went to school here for a few years. Okay. Then, then we left and went to Edmonton. And from there on, we went all our different places. But now we came down from Abbotsford, B.C. Mm -hmm. to, to attend this and, and see some family. Wow. So nice. Anyway, good, good, good to, to talk to you. you. Thank you so and much. All right. Sometimes we talk about things. Hi, guys. Sorry for this debate. How are you, sir? Good. My name is Chris. I know. You know? Well, I know. <laughs> you met. You're, you're old news. We already found out everything about you. <laughs> this is the type of lamps they used in the 30s. And in some remote areas, these lamps are still in use. This is a plow. In Zimbabwe's Shona language, we call it gejo, and most African countries are still using it at the communal lands and individual fields. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm fine. This man here, Josh Michaud, yeah. these, the two stagecoaches are his. 
Okay. And he's he's been coming every year and participating in sec in in uh, paying in the 30s for mm -hmm. 20. You know, this is the 25th year. These are all Josh's saddles. Okay. And right next there, that man's a wheelwright and a good friend of ours. Mm -hmm. And and uh, you know that's kind of a dying art, but he still makes wagon wheels the way they made them 100 years ago. Which okay. Is making that wheel. Yeah. And if you're here tomorrow yeah. at one o'clock. Yeah. He'll be pounding a steel ring around that one that's laying down, and they have to heat it, you know, red hot coals, and make it hot. Wow! To, you know, so it expands and mm -hmm. put it on, mm -hmm. put water on it, and uh, yeah. Wow! So, what were these things used for? That saddle for horses. Oh, for horses. Yeah. Okay. And you know, these are expensive saddles because you see all the fine work. Yeah. Like these saddles today would be about five thousand dollars each. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And these are all Josh's horses. Oh, okay, these and, ones. Yeah, and so one of our friends just is bringing hay to feed the horses oh, here. Oh, to feed them. Yeah. But anyway, good for you guys to come out from everything. Good for and, you. And thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much for the explanation and everything. You bet. So, the horses, they will be pulling this. Yes. Okay, now I get and, it. And, you know, he used to hook four horses to each of these stage, at least the stagecoaches. Okay. But this year, only two. Because he's getting older too, and that's you know, right. And to have with well, two stagecoaches, to have eight horses, and then you need some outriders, some men on horses, to make sure nothing goes wrong. Mm -hmm. It just it gets tougher and tougher to do okay, all of that. Eh? Okay, 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 so okay. So now he right. reduced it somewhat. All right. Ordinarily, you could just grab some hay, and then they would eat it right out of your hand. Yeah. Anyway, while he's doing that, yet. Yeah. And see. That mule, yes. See the little mule, the yeah. small one. Yeah. Okay, that's the mother, which oh, is the horse. Okay, all right. But the mule, the father would be a donkey, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And uh, that that little mule is only four weeks old. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. I like it. That mule can reproduce. Yes. Okay, yeah. I got it. Yes. Yeah. They can't. No. no. So if you get a horse and a donkey together, they yeah. produce a mule. Yeah. <laughs> and a mule. Is a mule and can't reproduce. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so interesting. Oh, okay. No, let's go over here. Come on. We'll get out of the way. Just yeah. see what we can See if they're a little mule. See if he will. Okay. I, I so worked my last seven years, I worked in Chad. Oh, in Chad? In Njamina. Oh, yeah? Yeah, well, wow. in the desert, eh? Oh, yeah? It was an oil company, yeah. Wow, so you know Africa. Oh, I know Africa, and before that I worked in Libya. Mm-hmm. Wow. And uh, and then I worked in the Middle East quite a bit, Saudi Arabia but and the, Kuwait. the only mistake that you made, you did not come to Zimbabwe. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> By but then, I be, I've but been to Zimbabwe on a holiday, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, for so sure. If you did, then that's cool. <laughs> and I enjoyed my... All these people in about an hour and a half. An hour. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yep. Nineteen thirty three to nineteen ninety nine. And guess what guys? This is the gentleman who built this thing. This was what I was all raised with in wow. this is my childhood farming days. Wow. Where I was raised in some of the stuff I saved from our farm. Wow. <laughs> and that's old bowl seat. My whole suitcase I left home with. Just here's a picture of our family farm with my parents' wedding picture and their fortieth anniversary. That there's the fire extinguisher we had, and then the hot water bottles that you have heating pads now, but that was a hot water bottle. And these here, the old typewriters we had, they were manual typewriters, and you had to have high fingers to get to the keyboards up above. Not like the new keyboards now, they're all flat, eh? This here's a hand forge that we used to use to uh, shape horseshoes, whatever we did on the farm, bend whatever iron, and you could weld with it if you knew how. And that's the old water pump that we used to have to pump water, pack it to the house in pails. And that there up there is a cheese press. Then my mother's 
sewing machine, washboard, everything. This is all done manually. And then the hair clippers. My dad used the neighbors used to all come over to get their hair cut, and the scissors and the comb. That little knife up there is a draw knife for taking bark off trees that we use for peeling trees for fence posts. And the little brace bit up there was all hand drilled. Everything was all by hand. And then the mum sewing machine, the ringer. Thank yeah. you very much. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you Glad too. Glad you came. Thank you so Glad much. You so where, where are you guys from? We are from Edmonton. <laughs> we just went to BC. <laughs> <laughs> Abomaika and uh, go and check out his channel going places with Abomaika oh yeah and we're at a beautiful place today never seen anything like this <laughs> 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 